Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and feign deceit, after traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity. Now, I want to deal with the hell doctrine. You know, because this scripture right here is one of my favorites when it comes to, you know, debunking all the philosophies of this world. You know, um, Christianity is a philosophy. You know, Muslim, Christmas, Easter, you know, a damn runny, a damn bunny rabbit uh, laying eggs and shit. But, you know, but, um, so I just want to deal with the hell and to prove that hell is not real and to prove that, you know, um, that hell is a condition and it's no place underground where it came from. And hopefully this video could be edifying. Oh, and what happens when you die? So. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. And that's why, that's the main reason why Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah said, love not the world, you know, because it's enmity with the Most High. This world, even the, uh, the moral standards, the philosophies as we're going into, the traditions as we're going into, the rudiments as we going into, they're all against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Everything. Everything is turned upside down because the wicked is running the world. But I want to get into this word rudiments. See how blue letter do? Look at all this shit. Because... You know, the truth coming out, so they try to put in a whole bunch of lies and then sneak the truth in there. So I want to get to the point. Letter D. So the elements, rudiments, primary and fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline. So that's what rudiments are. It's the fundamentals, the principles of it. You know, the beginning, the origins of it. You know, of like why. They celebrate it because, you know, they, you know, use Christmas as an example. We'll be sticking to hell. You know, they, they celebrate Christmas because they say that's Jesus birthday. So that's the rudiments of a tradition, you know. But um, let's read a little bit more, though. So as I say right here, G47, 48 something orderly in arrangement. That sounds like Cosmos. Matter of fact, let's see if that word is Cosmos real quick. Oh, Stokio. Okay. So I'll go back to it. But anyway, G4748, something orderly in arrangement, a serial base, basal, fundamental, initial, constituent, constituent. Literally, a proposition, element, principle, rudiment. Yeah, so yeah, it's the, basically the beginning, the fundamental of it, the origins of it, the reason why they celebrate, you know, the tradition that they celebrate. So that's going back to rudiment. So Colossians 2 and 8, and then we're going to get to the rest of the scriptures. So beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. That's the point. Now, let's see where this thing came from. Now, this is this is a Roman, you know, mythology, all right? And this is the extension of the Roman Empire. The last famous big empire was the Roman Empire. That's why you still deal with Roman numerals. That's why when you in college, you deal with uh, fraternities after Greeks, uh, alphabet. You know, Alpha, Omega, Theta, Kappa, you know, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or even a botanist, deal with plants, you got to know Latin, you know, and the main languages of the Roman Empire was Latin and Greek. 
And if you look on the back of your dollars, Roman numerals, which um, sums up to 1776 when the so-called United States got their independence. And then what? The Super Bowl, you deal with Roman numerals. In school, you had to learn Roman numerals. And uh, um, the, the original 16, I mean, King James 1611 Bible, you deal with Roman numerals. All right? So, this is where it comes from. So, Orcus was a god of the underworld, punisher of broken oaths in Italic and Roman mythology. So, that's where you get the, you know, hell from and Satan underground and things of that nature. And you see it say a broken oath. So, basically, when you be bad, you know, Orcus, the punisher, you know, of the underworld. So, this is where you get the hell doctor from. Let's continue reading. As with Hades, the name of the god was also used for the underworld itself. See? That's where you get the word hell from, Hades. Which we're going to find out what, what hell means when we get the scriptures. In later tradition, he was conflated with this painter. Orcus was portrayed in painting and extrusion tombs as hairy bearded, bearded giant. And look at that. You see, he got horns. And that's what we all grew up on. A red man with horns, with a pitchfork, ready to burn your ass when you die because you was bad. All right? And as you see, it say Roman, Italic, and Roman mythology. So now let's go to what mythology means. So, mythology is a collection of myths. Especially one belonging to a particular religious or cultural tradition because that's where you learn hell from from a religious and cultural tradition aka christianity which is the biggest religion in the world which the uh, majority of the world follow at one point in time everybody followed that but now you know they seeing christianity is bullshit you know, the truth is more relevant to Christianity today, but the Lord is still dealing with a small sanctuary, a.k.a. the remnant, a.k.a. the elect, the hopeful elect that we aspire to be, the one that he gave knowledge and understanding. Because as you see, Christians don't go into, you know, words and scriptures like this. So, the study of myths, this field includes archaeology, all right, that's something that you go dig up and search out. Compared to that's something that you compare to one thing to another mythology as we just read and folklore folklore now this is where another word that we got to look up so let's get that folklore the traditional beliefs customs and stories of a community passed through the generations by word of mouth so this is a tradition that was passed down through word of mouth, like all of these religions. But we dealing with oh, all of these religions and all of these um, myths, all of these traditions, all of these rudiments like Easter, like uh, fucking uh, Christmas, Santa Claus and shit. Uh, you know, Halloween, you know. This all comes back from associated with different gods passed down through generation by word of mouth. All right. Because when you in power, you could put anything in play and the people going to follow. And the scriptures say as the people, as the ruler is, so is the people. All right. So now let's get into the scriptures. This is what happens when you die. So ain't no such thing as hell. So we're gonna get we're gonna get into those type of scriptures first. So Ecclesiastes twelve and seven, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. So this is what happens when you die. You know, that's why, you know, in the, in the world, say from dust to dust, ash to ashes, you know, because you're going to go back to where you came from. You was made from the dust. You can go back into the dust. That's why your skin have the elements of the dust. All right. We're going to read it one more time. Then shall the dust return to the earth 
as it was. And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. Because you can't destroy a spirit. All right. And I'm going to get one more. This is dealing with reincarnation too, but that's another topic for another day. That was 104. Whew. Now we're going to read Psalms 104, 29 and 30. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. All right. 30 is the point. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. So the Lord, as we just read in the past scripture, it talks about when you die, you go into the dust and then your spirit go back to the heavenly father. All right. This scripture talks about how your spirit goes back to the heavenly father. Then it comes back to the earth. After a amount of time that the Lord, you know, want to bring you back. But like I said, that's a whole nother topic. But I just want to prove that when your spirit goes to the most high, you can't burn a spirit. A spirit is pure energy. Spirit is fire, actually. Matter of fact, let's see if I can find that. Is it in the same chapter? Yep. Psalms 104 and 4. Who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers as a flame of fire. All right. Spirits is pure energy. That's why when you die, your spirit leave and your body get cold. That's why your body stays at the degrees of 98.6. Okay. That's why when you lose blood, you get cold because life is in the blood, as it say in the scriptures. So now. Let's get into what hell is. And matter of fact, let's get into where, what judgment is. Because that's hell is judgment after you die, right? When you bad, you know. We're going to show you where the place of judgment is. Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. What is under the sun? The earth. This is the place that you serve your judgment. That's why there's a whole bunch of calamities in this world. A lot of pestilence in this world. So you're going to tell me that the, that because first of all, the scriptures say that the Lord is merciful, right? And compassionate. So what about those people who went through brutal slavery? What about, um, you know, the people? Matter of fact, yeah, this is deal, this is deal with slavery. Because that's the worst thing that ever happened on this earth. So... What about the people that went through slavery? They was in hell. And then after they died, they got to go in the ground and burn forever too? Gosh darn. <laughs> Gosh darn. So you got to ask yourself, man, are you really reading the scriptures or are you just going after the traditions and rudiments of this world? I'm going to take the second one. That y'all go after the traditions and rudiments of this world. You know, collections of beliefs passed down through generation by word of mouth. Because the reason I believed in Jesus, thought he was white, believed in Satan, believed he was a red beast with horns underground ready to burn you when you die. Because guess what? That's what I was taught from a young child until mid child. Well, actually, from young child to before I came into the truth, which I was 26 years old. So moreover, I saw under the place of the judgment of judgment. That wickedness was there and the place where righteousness was there and that iniquity was there. So the place of judgment is under the sun. This is the place that you serve your judgments. No such thing as hell in the ground. All right, from there, let's go to Isaiah. It's, it's many as scriptures, but I want to get, you know, a few because I don't want to make this video too long. So Boom. Let's read Isaiah 5 and 13 and 14. Therefore, my people are going into captivity. Let me read that again. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. 
and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Here's the point. Therefore, hell. Okay, what did the scripture just say before? Therefore, my people have went into captivity because they have no knowledge. That's the hell that the scriptures is about to talk about. So therefore, hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure in their glory and their multitude in her pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. So basically, he's saying that by us going into captivity, that is a hellish condition. All right. Being a captive is hell, man. So that's why you got certain people in this life who lives, you know, in their heaven. And you got certain people who live in their hell. And the majority of the nation of Israel lives in hell. Okay? Because they can't do what they want to do. They subject it. Okay? They can't even travel where they want to travel. They got to have a damn passport. You, you're bound to your job. You live paycheck to paycheck, majority of Israelites. And, and, and you be stressing if your ass be late again, you're going to get fired. So this ain't no damn place of heaven. This ain't no place of freedom. OK, heaven symbolized rulership and freedom, man. Not liberty. Liberty is per, is permission. OK. I'm going to read 14 again. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. All right. And open her mouth without measure and their glory. See, our glory was turned into shame. When we went into slavery. All right. And we're getting back our glory, you know, little by little by this word, as it says in Zephaniah 3 and 19, that we're going to get praise and fame in the land where we was put to shame, man. And that's coming. That's why when I go out there and preach and stuff, they be like, oh, is you, is you the black Hebrew Israelites? Everybody knows about the black Hebrew Israelites, even though the, we're not black Hebrew Israelites. That's what the um, news put on us because you associate anything with black is negativity. So that's why they want to put that, um, you know, that that notion out there. But everybody hear about it. That's the point. And this place is hell. All right. So, matter of fact, let's go get. Ooh, I'm already at 17 minutes. Yeah, videos like this do take a little long. Let's see what hell is again. Revelation 6 and 8. And I looked, and behold, a pair horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Okay? Now, this is talking about the wicked, the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. And in the scriptures talk about how death, because everywhere he go, he kills. And everywhere he go, destruction follow him, which is the hell. This man put hell on everybody. Matter of fact, let's go into the word hell. To prove to you that hell is nothing but the grave. In a pit. Now, of course, they ain't going to tell you that it's a condition, but I just proved it to you through scripture. The Greek word Hades. Now look at all this shit. Ooh, look at that. Orcus. Orcus. Then, then we just looked that up. That came from that root guard. That came from that um, Roman god. The Roman mythology god. All right? Look at blue letter. So, Orcus. The later use of the word. See? There we go. The grave. All right. The grave. Death. Hell. All right. But that's where you get the word hell from. Matter of fact. Let's go back to Isaiah 5 and 14. Oops. That's good, cause I want to. I want to look up that word in the Hebrew too, which I know is uh, Sha'al. Yeah. So. Strong's H. 
7585. Sheol, Sheol. Mm, and yep. second entry, Sheol, Sheol. Yep. Which how you really pronounce it, Sheol. But look, it say Sheol underworld, grave, hell, pit. Place of no return. Wicked sent there for punishment. See, this this is this is the uh, the traditions, the rudiments of men. So that's why I'm reading them to show you how the first one is the truth, and then the others is lies. So a the underworld, okay, destination for the abode of the dead, okay. That that can actually be true because the the hell is the grave, okay. But place of no return. You return. We read the scriptures how the Lord gave the spirit and then returned back to the earth. All right. So it is a place of return. This this is a lie without praise in the most high wicked sent there for punishment. Righteous, not a not a bounded it into it of the place of exile. All right. Now, that's that. That's true one. That's true one, because when you a captive. All right. This one right here, V. When you a captive, you're waiting to be exiled. You're waiting to be exiled out of hell, which is a condition, all right, of extreme degradation, degradation in sin, all right? So, now, I'm going to end it on this one. Now, tell me, you can't get past this. If hell is fire underground, tell me, what do this mean then? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Wait a minute. If death and hell is cast into the lake of fire, how can hell be the lake of fire? Because death and hell is going to be destroyed by the lake of fire. The nuclear missiles that's going to hit this place. That's the lake of fire. Babylon the Great being destroyed. Okay. So death and hell is a condition. Well death is death. But hell is a condition. Alright. But if you want to get real spiritual. The scripture said. That those who remain in the congregation of the dead. Matter of fact. Those who remain in the congregate congregation of no understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So to be honest, if you walking around here, even though you're breathing, but you don't have the truth, you're considered dead. Okay. So if you want to go on a spiritual note. So hopefully this video was edifying just to show you that. Um, hell is a condition. It's not a place on the ground. We just, we read scriptures about, um, I have one more to get, but we are already at 23 minutes, but I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it. It's in first, first Samuel 28. Remember when Saul, when the most high rejected Saul, and then he inquired, a a, a, a witch to get Samuel to come and talk to him for he could inquire of God. And Samuel told him that God ain't dealing with you no more. And you're going to lose the battle against the Philistines. And you're going to be right next to me. <laughs> okay. So wait a minute. Sam, uh, Saul did a bad thing. God rejected him and he ain't go to hell. He went back to the spirit world. So hopefully this video was edifying. And Shalom.